The following may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Body of a man found on riverbank in St. James. The body of a 30-year-old St. James man identified as Danal Singh was found at 2.40 a.m. this morning on the riverbank at Bombay Street, St. James. Police believe Singh's homicide may be gang-related. Mother and son erased in home invasion. A woman and her 12-year-old son were erased in their home in Penal this morning. The attack occurred sometime after 1 a.m. The woman's other son, a three-year-old, was found at the house, but he was not hurt. Abio Kujo, 30, died at the house at Larches Road, bleeding from her wounds. Her son, Levi Lewis, ran about a quarter mile to his grandfather's house for help. His grandfather rushed him to the hospital and called the police. Levi was waiting for his SEA results. Police are searching for a suspect, a soldier who is known to the woman. Officers of the Homicide Bureau of Investigations, Region 3, are investigating. Market vendor erased by unknown assailant. A market vendor met his demise in Arima on Monday morning. According to a police report, Trevor Leque, also known as Douglas, of Prodic Virtual Street, was found lying motionless in his yard just after 6 a.m. on Monday. Inquirers revealed that the 38-year-old man was called out of his home on Sunday evening, and when he answered, he was erased by the person who called him. Douglas's body was taken to the Forensic Science Center. Investigations are ongoing. Mom dies after attack by female assailant. A mother of five met her demise in what police believe was the outcome of a domestic dispute. Police said Stephanie Calbio, 32, of Abi Pujade Street, Carinage, was on her way home around 11.15 a.m. yesterday when she was attacked by another woman. Calbio was three times in her back and was rushed to the St. James Medical Hospital where she died. Her mother-in-law, Patricia Roberts, Glasgow, said she believed Calbio's death was premeditated, given that she made several reports against the person who allegedly attacked her. This is not the first attack against Stephanie. She has made numerous reports to the Carinage police station, but I think the police did not do enough. The last incident was at the health center when Stephanie went to get vaccinated. But again, the police did not get involved, she said. Roberts Glasgow said Calbio celebrated her birthday on April 28th, and for Mother's Day, she made a meal for her. She said before she went to work, she spent time with Calbio and her granddaughter. Calbio was a mother of five children, the youngest being 13 months old. The 24-year-old suspect, Chevelle Francis, has surrendered to police and is being questioned in relation to the homicide. So, both of them have a child for so somebody named Kiva, who is a scorpion. Right, and both of them always fighting, and the Indian girl always beating Chevelle now. So, like, today now, the Indian girl is coming from work. So, like, the Indian girl we can see Pep, and Chevelle was standing by Tote buying something, and they see one another, and they start a fight. And like both of them had knife on them and they stab up one another and shovel in critical condition in yes, but and the Indian gave them. Police search for missing toddler. A massive land, air and water search was launched and continued last night for two-year-old Kimani Francis, who went missing after he wandered off from his Texture Village Point Fortin home yesterday morning. Search teams reported that baby Kimani, 
who was barefooted and only wearing pampers, was last seen running in the direction of a bridge about a quarter mile away from his 10th Street extension home. A resident contacted the police after she saw the child on the road around 10.20 a.m. She told the police she tried to follow Kimani but lost sight of him. By the time police arrived, the child was nowhere to be found. The child's mother, Kimberly Charles, 22, a cashier, told police she last saw her son at their home around 10 a.m. She only realized he was not in the house when an emergency response patrol officer alerted her around 10.30 a.m. that her son was seen wandering along the road. As word spread about the child's disappearance, villagers and residents from surrounding areas joined in the search with the police, who had support from the Air Guard, K-9 unit and the fire service. Describing the situation as heart-wrenching, Point Fortune Mayor Salima Thomas said she has three children and as a mother, she was still trying to process what was happening. She spoke to the child's mother over the phone. Kimani's mother told her that her son was at home having a fruit while she was doing some work on her mobile phone. Thomas said an aunt would have left the house, so she's assuming with the door opening, it probably was left open, giving the child access to walk out. This is just based on a conversation with the mom. I don't have concrete evidence of that. Although she felt law enforcement officers were doing a good job, Thomas said the police should have locked down Point Fortin in case the child was abducted. The child could be anywhere, but I am saying we could have broadened the search because we have main entrances and exits to Point Fortin. And if it is that that baby had to leave or somebody to take that baby, he may have gone in a vehicle. I am saying the search, we could have broadened it from the time we got the notice to search vehicles as they enter and exit. She called on all Burgesses in the Point Fortin district to put down what you are doing and come out and support the search party that is here. Ravi Ram Ratan from Extreme Hunters said they mobilized as soon as they found out and started searching the rivers in the community. He said two men cutting grass in the area also saw the child running in the direction of the bridge, which is why they were combing the river and surrounding areas. We're hopeful that we don't get him in the river, he said. Ren Gopi Singh, who was in the river searching for Kimani, said they were flooded with calls about the child's disappearance. He said they were told the child loves water, but they were remaining positive that he will be found. The child is two years old. He have on pampers, no shoes, no slippers on. This pitch going to be real hot. This bridge is made of iron, so it is going to be difficult for him to cross. He might see water and he might want to dip his foot into water. He added that when the child disappeared, the tide would have been high and the water would have been traveling downstream. Gopi Singh assured they would not stop searching until they found him. We will stay until we get closure. The full team out. Meanwhile, Point Fortin MP Richards Jr. and Tech Chair Gapo Councillor Lyndon Harris were also at the scene. Richards said, The minister is also on the ball with respect to sending down additional resources for us to search for this two-year-old boy Kimani. The MP was concerned, however, that darkness was fast approaching and there was no sign of the child. He added, Of course the search will continue. We have additional resources from the community. We are following the command of Inspector Sicharan, and I am going to speak to him shortly after this gathering to treat with lights and see how we can mobilize for the night search. Councillor Harris said he called Inspector Sicharan and the municipal police after hearing the child's disappearance and spoke to the child's mother, who was distraught. When I spoke to the mother, it was basically to console her because she was crying at the time and basically to find out where the child was last seen so we can locate our resources in that way to find the child, he said. He said the Point Fortune Borough Corporation Disaster Management Unit sent their drones while Heritage Petroleum dispatched personnel to assist in the search. Captain Valence Rambarat of the Hunter Search and Rescue Team was also searching last night. He said at 7.21 we are using a van with headlights to search the edges of the road. Ramparat said they will be assisting the Coast Guard divers 
who were expected to arrive a short while later. The child has still not been found. Body of toddler Kimani Francis found in Guapo River. The search for two-year-old Kimani Francis ended in tragedy, as the boy's body was discovered shortly before 11 a.m. Francis's body was found in the Guapo River, an area that was searched several times by rescue groups on Monday. Yesterday, the toddler wandered away from his Techchir village home in Point Fortin. A police report was made, and a subsequent massive search exercise was launched. Investigations are ongoing. Maloney woman granted one hundred and fifty thousand dollars bail for fraud. 33-year-old Nicolin Agarat of Maloney Gardens was granted $150,000 bail after she appeared before Justice of the Peace Stephen Young, charged with two counts of forgery, two counts of uttering a false document, and obtaining the sum of $46,000 by false pretenses. According to police reports, Ms. Agarat used a false job letter and payslip to apply for a loan from a commercial bank. Officers of the fraud squad were contacted, and following investigations, Agarat was arrested and subsequently charged. Investigations were conducted by Senior Superintendent A. G. Grome, Superintendent A. G. Rubin, A. S. B. Lutchman, and supervised by Inspector David, Sergeant A. G. Tony, and W. P. C. Campbell. Scarborough laborer meets his demise after free diving. A 51-year-old laborer of Tobago drowned while free diving at Buckhu Beach on Saturday, according to reports. Alan Fraser of Rockyvale, Scarborough, went missing on Saturday morning after he went to the beach to free dive. Around 5 p.m., lifeguards at the beach saw a body floating and brought it to the shore. Fraser, whose body was later identified by his siblings and mother, Was pronounced dead on the scene by a district medical officer. Fraser's mother, Joyce Fraser Forbes, said she became worried after she did not see her son earlier that day, as he would frequently call or visit her. When I did not see him today, I start calling his phone and did not get through at all. I said where he could be. Fraser Forbes said. She described her son as hardworking, as she noted that he would always seek out private jobs after finishing his shift with the Tobago House of Assembly. Every morning he goes and does his cutlessing, and when he finishes, he always looking for some hustle to do. She said. She also noted that while her son had been diving for several years, she would always warn him about the dangers of the sea. He had a fishing boat, but he gave it up to stop the conflict. I told him to forget about the sea," she said. An autopsy is expected to be performed on Fraser's body at the Scarborough mortuary later this week. Police are continuing investigations. Missing Arima teen found in remote shack in Tamana. A 16-year-old girl of Arima has returned home to her family after being found in a remote agriculture camp in Tamana on Sunday. According to reports, the teenager was reported missing last Tuesday after she left home to go to school and did not return. Responding to the missing person report, members of the Hunters Search and Rescue Team joined officers of the Sangre Grande Police Station in searching several communities in East Trinidad for her. On Saturday night, the team received information that she was at a makeshift camp in a forested area of Foro Tamana. The team took the teenager's mother to the location, where she was found with a man around 11 a.m. The team of hunters assisted the mother in convincing her daughter to return home with her. We thought that this was the best Mother's Day present we could give, a release from the group stated. 
Police are expected to interrogate the man as they continue investigations into the teenager's disappearance. Adrian Schoon and party promoter plead not guilty to breaching COVID regulations at party boat event. Businessman Adrian Schoon and event promoter Shahid Abdullah have pleaded not guilty to three charges over allegedly breaching public health regulations for the COVID-19 pandemic in relation to an event on Schoon's vessel on Boxing Day last year. Schoon and Abdullah, who are accused of operating a party boat, hosting a party and gathering in a group of more than 10 in an alleged contravention of the then-regulations, entered their not-guilty pleas as they made their second virtual court appearance before Magistrate Carrie and Byer on Monday. During the hearing, Schoon's lawyer Larry Williams noted that after a High Court judge upheld his lawsuit over a justice of the peace acting unlawfully in granting the TNT Police Service search warrants to search his properties after raiding the event last Friday, his client's cell phones, laptops and a USB drive were returned to him. However, Williams noted that investigators kept possession of several documents which should have been returned. He noted that evidence obtained through the warrants would have to be excluded from the eventual trial of the case. Also appearing alongside Soon and Abdullah were most of the 90 patrons of the event, who were charged with gathering in a group of more than 10. While most of the group appeared before Magistrate Byer and also entered not guilty pleas, a handful who were not properly served with the charge via summons did not appear. Magistrate Barr noted that a prosecutor from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions has not been appointed since a group made their first court appearance before her in early April and expressed hope that the process would be completed by the next hearing so she could set a trial date. Schoon, the son of Trade and Industry Minister Paula Gopi Schoon, came under scrutiny after police raided a seaside brunch event on board the MV Ocean Pelican on Boxing Day for allegedly breaching the COVID-19 regulations, which prohibited the operation of a party boat at the time. Schoon denied any wrongdoing as he claimed that the vessel was converted to a safe zone under the health regulations. Finance Minister Colm Ilbert weighed in on the issue as he confirmed that he had not authorized a special restaurant liquor license for the vessel or Schoon. Officials of the Customs and Excise Division then wrote to Schoon's legal team, informing them that the two special restaurant liquor licenses remained null and void and would be cancelled. The licenses were subsequently returned. Attorney General Faris al Rawi was also identified in the issue, as newspaper reports revealed that he had a telephone conversation with Schoon while he was being questioned by police after they stopped the event. Al Rawi admitted to having the conversation but repeatedly denied giving Schoon legal advice on the issue or seeking to influence the police's investigation. The TNT Police Service applied to compel Schoon to disclose his passwords and biometric data for his electronic devices, which were seized by police. Delivering a judgment in late February, High Court Judge Jeffrey Henderson denied the application under the Interception of Communications Act. Henderson said that he was of the view that the request was excessive and disappropriate, in light of the fact that investigators were seeking evidence that Schoon had advertised the event on social media. In a judgment delivered late last week, High Court Judge Ricky Rahim ruled that the search warrants for Schoon's properties were unlawfully granted by J.P. Oliver Budhu and ordered that the warrants be quashed. Schoon was also represented by Chelsea John, while Abdullah was represented by Craig B. Path.